Hello, everyone. I uh, hope you're all right. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, sorry, you're cleaner windows. I um, struggled myself to get this one out on live. Last week, I couldn't do anything. It was Easter holiday, so my sister-in-law, she come all the way down from Scotland to us, which is some distance. And obviously, we had company around, so timings you have run away and I, I just decided it'd be rude if I did it and then today we've been a bit busy got a few things rushed to get this done and then some of my graphics planning and ideas I had for today it was um touch and go so I was behind the ball curve I wanted to be to, to get here but uh, I hope everyone's had a good week mine's not been too bad my daughter Sophie she's not able to work for me for a little while and um Basically, it's just me and Matthew, so we're doing two of us doing the work of three people normally do. So it's been a bit tight, but we're we're kind of getting it there and getting through it. And this week, because it's Easter holidays, my youngest son, who's 17, uh, David, and you've probably seen him in one of the videos, actually, he's been helping me last week and he's going to help me this week as well. Um, so he's getting some pocket extra pocket money for that. <laughs> so it's, it's all good, hopefully. And... Couldn't work last Friday. I expect it's the same for a lot of you out there. It's mainly because we've had the high winds and later on as the day progressed, I'm glad I made the right call, to be honest. So I got on with a few other things and I was meant to work last Saturday. I work one Saturday a month at the moment now and um, we cancelled that as well because obviously it was a lot higher wind to the gusts up to 46 miles an hour where we live. Again, it seemed a bit half a day late, but then it hit and today's been rather bad. So again, I, I'm glad we've made the right call. So really, I've lost a day's work for this month because Saturday's work's gone on to this Saturday coming. So we'll catch up there. Hopefully the rest of the month, weather-wise, will be nothing like what we have had the last few months. But I need it all to go right and start getting in a bit of profit. Anyway, just going over to some of the uh, the comments on here. I've already flashed a couple up. Oh, I can't get it. Here we go. Ooh, uh, what am I doing wrong there? <laughs> no idea. Bear with me. Uh... Sorry about that one. I have no idea what's going on here. Probably go to... There's obviously something going on. I told you I weren't doing well on the prep today. <laughs> oh, well, you can see it all in the chat, so I'll probably go with it on there. So just excuse me, I'll get back onto this. So, uh, yeah, just starting at the top again. I have no idea. One of those gremlins, I suppose. All right, your cleaner windows says evening. Didn't think you were going live today. Yeah. My admin's a bit up my arse today. <laughs> um, but we got there in the end. I knew how to do it because last week I didn't. And tight marker, you all right, mate? Hope all's good with yourself as well. And I hope everyone's doing well this month. Jake, you all right, mate? Yeah, no worries about the emails, mate. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And yeah, I hope... Answering your emails the way I have has been helpful. Um, I'll come back to you on that one as well. I'll just try and catch up on everyone else. Uh, John Winters, hi, what is the population in your area? The village I'm in is called Parson Drove and there's about 500 houses, which seems mad for a village. Um, how did I get all that information? There's probably more now. When I first started about six years ago, I was going on that uh, post office postcode finder or find that address. And I was just typing in postcodes of villages to work out how many houses were there because it lists all the addresses. So I knew what areas to target and leaflet drops and say if only 2% of that area became customers roughly, how many customers potentially in the surrounding areas where I live got. So that's where I got the info from, mate. Um, going back to you, uh, Jake. May go to the Window Cleaning Expo. I think a lot of people on here will be there as well. I know a few people have been asking me as well, which is nice. 
And when I first started, just over six years ago, I went, could have been seven years ago now, I went to the one anyway before, yeah, it'd be six years ago, a few months before got my business plan together. And basically I just spoke to the punters that were walking around there, spoke to a couple and it kind of convinced me just to go for it. So I decided jump straight in to be a window cleaner. And I went to the X-Line stall because that's someone I'd spoke to early on the phone. And I liked the way they spoke to me when I was just someone asking for help, not necessarily going to buy anything from the website. And that turned me into a customer for them. So I got advice from them there. So my advice, if anyone's like Jake going for the first time and you're thinking about becoming a window cleaner, just go around different stalls, explain your situation, just don't have a pre-prepared script in your head. Just talk normal, but you've kind of got the questions you want to ask. Just let the conversation flow and everyone will be really helpful. And a lot of the people walking around there are window cleaners themselves or carpet cleaners, pressure washers. They'll all be there. The show's getting bigger every year. I haven't been since that time. I've been wanting to. And everyone will be really helpful. Just have a brew, conversation with someone, pick the brains and see if you get the answers that kind of help push you over what you already know, which is just do it. Just get out there. Uh, sorry, John, just come back to you, mate. Uh, see if my comments are working. I have no idea why they're not working. It's obviously something to work out. Is there enough work in the area? Yeah, for me, I've got more work than what I can handle. I always... Top tip for everyone is I always have slightly more work than what I can handle. And the pure reason is if I get some customers that will come in skip, it doesn't matter. I've still hit my target money that day that I need to make sure I'm going to get over the finish line um, at the end of the month in terms of revenue or money coming in. No worries, Jake. And sorry, I get a delay with the the messages coming in and out. So sometimes you'll put something up, there'll be a delay for me to answer it, but that's why. Um, but yeah, John, it will come. I would say I was fortunate because I used to be in the military. So the last three months in the military I was on what was called gardening leave. So I saved up all my leave. That's like paid time off work. So I was still being paid as if I was in work, but I was on leave. And that's when I was out there window cleaning. I had everything ready to go on day one with me van in the install. And... The pressure wasn't there. The pressure was there though to get enough money in monthly within three uh, months. But my wife was working as well and I was going to get a military pension. So it kind of pressure was off me a little bit, but I still had to get a certain amount to make it work. Basically, I've, I found out what our cutoff point was um, to pay the bills at home. Luckily, that all sort of come into place. And then gradually as time went on, it built up. But I would say within your first three years, it's probably possible to stack your window cleaning. So you, as an individual, have got absolutely more than enough work to get you through each day. Excuse me, each day of the month. And obviously people are going to come, but people are going to go and gradually it'll build up more. And what you'll find is the more your customer base is, the more the word is able to spread because more people are going to pass in, um, recommend you. And I use things like next door. That was really good. And obviously puts you in your local area and the local villages. And I did make the mistake of chasing work. So people far away were asking me. I was going out there in the hope that I was going to pick up more work in these areas. And it did. But it come to a point where I realized I was losing so much time traveling when I could have been working. So once I'd hit my target money and I got past a threshold where it was getting too hard. I had to lose the furthest away work to shrink my net in. So my round was more compact, closer to home. Because your van at the end of the day only carries a certain amount of water. And then if you're like me, I've got a static system. So that's always filling up with water while I'm working. So when I come back, I can just transfer the water from an IBC tank into my tank in the van, get straight out there working. Whereas if I had the reverse osmosis and DI set up on my tank, I have to park the tank at home, plug in the water, and then I can't move until that tank's full up, and that could take hours. So a static system allows you to get in, fill up, get out, and probably run two vans if need be. And that's, that's the route I went. So it won't take long, John. Uh, just use post office, 
uh, find address. I, I can't remember exactly. You can just put the names in there, I think, of the village, or I did postcodes of the roads within the village, and then I just counted how many houses were in that road just to work out what areas may be worth trying to target. But word of mouth, mate, is the biggest advertisement going out there. So just concentrate. Like we'll, you all do on a good job, that will speak for itself. So I'm just trying to catch up. Uh, buh, buh, where to get to? Uh, web pages, Google placement number one. Yeah, the first thing I did as well was made sure I had a website, had a van, sign written van, and tried to get social media things all set in place. Facebook was not too bad, but it, for me, I was fine as attracting the wrong customer. It's mainly those who wanted a, a one-off clean. And you'd be gutted when you're trying to start out because you get a one-off clean. You're glad you've got a potential customer. You go out there, but then you come away realising it's just a one-off and it's not going to be a regular. But that will happen a lot in your first year. Then it starts to tailor off and you, because you'll start stacking up with more regular rounds and more regular people. Uh, Rich is saying, sickening really that I bet you earn more money now than when the military, which is really wrong. I'm earning about the same roughly enough, and that's with me pension, I think, and the cost of living going up. But yeah, the military may weren't bad. It was good money for what you do. It's just sometimes you really have to earn it. Um, your cleaner window says, yeah, same here. More work than I can cope with, and I'm turning people away. That's a brilliant place to be at as well. We, I, The problem is when you're building up, you say yes to everything, that when you have to start saying no, you find it really hard as well. So you have to think twice. You really do your best to squeeze people in because you can hear the desperation sometimes in your potential customers' voices because they really want you to clean the windows, especially when they know you're reliable and you come well-recommended sort of thing. But yeah, it's hard. But always just have that slightly bit more than you can handle. So if you lose a few customers, it's not kind of putting you in a bad place. And the other good thing about that as well, you could maybe start switching out some of those customers that aren't really good for you and replace them with potentially what could be a good customer. And you'll tighten up the round the way you want it. It will take years, I think, to have a very good window cleaning round every single day. And people, unfortunately, in that time, no matter how much you're doing that, they're going to move away. So there'll be gaps and then you have to wait. <coughs> John's thinking the right thing. Get rid of the tight wallets. Okay, Johnny's saying, I'm sending out 500,000 leaflets this summer. Two new vans filled, hopefully. Wow. That's massive. Well done. Uh, I think when I first started, I got 10,000 leaflets. I reckon I've put about... 2000 out and I've still got the others <laughs> I have a couple in my van but I stopped putting them out now it just started taking me too long it's really hard when you think you've got to drive out to a village and then you're going to go on foot I can see why they try and source that out to people to deliver leaflets but I was tight so I did it myself and it started to take time because as you start to get customers and you're going out there sorry my telly's going a bit funny um you're starting to lose time to put leaflets out. But when you've got days of doing nothing is to go out, get your van, get visible, get out there tapping on windows, leaflets, every, anything to get you going. I find now business cards, I've kind of used them to replace leaflets, always having the van and it's easy just to hand them out when you get walk-ups that way or you could even say, oh, I'll just put a business card for your door for you. A cleaner window says he'll be at the cleaning show. So if anyone basically is on there, just... Say hi. And you're thinking of taking someone on part-time next year. Wow. It's hard, isn't it, when you take people on because you want to guarantee them a set money. So you want enough work, don't you, to make sure that after you've paid people, you're left with what you need. And I think certainly it's found as you're taking on more and you're growing, it doesn't seem to be your wage that's growing you're just getting enough to start paying someone else because you want to put as much away to one side to, I suppose, attract the right person. I'm lucky because it's all my family. So it started with me. Then it started with me and my wife because I got her to finish a job as being a carer and working nights. I said, you might as well try a window cleaner with me because I can pay exactly what you're getting from the home and then we can hopefully build up. Then COVID hit. I'm sure you might have seen it in other videos 
that are done. So she had to stay at home because the younger two were school and they had to be doing stuff at home. So she had to homeschool them basically. So that's when my son Matthew stepped in. He did it for free because I couldn't pay him. And I used that as a training period. Then as I was building up with more customers rather than the money going in my pot, I was putting that into him. And then I said, the more we work, the harder we get and faster at doing things, the more customers to take on them quicker. I can increase your wages, which is what we've done. And then I got to the point where my daughter, Sophie, struggling to get work. Uh, me and Matthew are struggling. So I said, do you want to try window cleaning? And if it's OK, then we'll slowly build your pot up. So that's what we've done. And then on really busy days, my younger two now, they, they join in on the Saturday job. That will be coming this Saturday and with my wife. So it'll be all six of us um, smashing out a few big jobs. And obviously with six of us, we can get them done quick. So that's where all the gardener backpacks I've got come in handy. And that's why. And some of them are internal jobs. So we have a team do inside, team do outside on them ones. And we can get through them quite quick. I definitely would not want to be doing them on my own. You can move into pressure washing as well, Rob, um, John San and render cleaning and solar panel cleaning. I definitely had thought of that. I did think about doing pressure washing quite early on with the window cleaning because I was watching A. McIntosh and that's what he was doing. But I didn't have the money to invest in that kit. And then as I started to get too, I'm too busy with the windows, basically, because as much as the windows can be affected by weather, pressure washing can to a degree. I know you could be out there in wet weather cleaning, but you need the warm days to do like the resanding or going back to do the resealing and that sort of thing. And also, as you know, with window cleaning, it seems dead simple, brushing a bowl, load of water, but it's a weird mad science to get the water. You've got to get your confidence when you're cleaning the windows. And some of the things you think would be easy you worry and stumble on and you've got to work out them problems. And I know I'll have to do all that again with pressure washing, but I'm feeling more confident enough now to give maybe it a go. Who knows? It's something I'm definitely thinking about, but I definitely haven't got the outlay money to set myself up for that. So I have been thinking of render cleaning because I've got 45 litre trolley. It's got, excuse me, chemical pump in it. So I could perhaps use what I've got to clean render but having never done it before i'd probably volunteer to do some jobs and work things out get me confidence and experience and it's probably worth me doing a course as well but again that all costs money and it all takes time and solar panel cleaning is definitely something i get asked a lot and i do do some solar panel cleaning but it's stuff you can do with a water-fed pole basically there's been a couple of tough jobs with lichen but i haven't got the proper solar panel kit that's for sure but yeah, there is a lot of things you can do, can't you, add on to your window cleaning, like gutter cleaning is good for me. I can't remember when I did a gutter cleaning day now. It was sometime last week. Basically, I had one house, it was in the video anyway, you probably saw it. We did one job where we did a gutter clear, and then we did windows and conservatory windows and a conservatory roof. And basically, the customer has got us to clean it because it is a property that had been rented out for six years and it needed a good clean. So we did that and they were happy. And we ended up getting a quote for the inside conservatory, which we've done has been accepted. So that's something I can put on a rainy day. Should have done that last Friday, but we didn't think about it at the time. And um, then what did we do? Went somewhere else where we did facious office and gutters. First time on a customer and walked away with a quote with a gutter clear as well. And because I had all the kit in the van, I showed me um, got a vac system as well. He's impressed with that. And then we did a normal window clean for a customer. And then the last one was fascia softs and gutters. I got to clear and clean the windows as well. So that was a good day. And that's where I had my son, David, as well as Matthew helping with me as well. Yeah, John, I've probably answered already. I do do internal cleans. Luckily, they're not too regular. It's mainly for some elderly people, really, that can't do it themselves. And about once every three months, we do an internal clean. They do the rest to keep on top of it. We sort of like do a reset for them. There's a job we do on a Saturday for two customers. One's a fairly big indoor job because it's for a customer and they've got an area where they have like seven conservatories, their showroom. So we clean all the windows, the roof, internal and external as well. 
Ah, it's you, John. You're just leaving your messages on some of mine. Right, got you. Is it yourself, mate? That's the guy in Germany that's been commenting some in videos. Ah, uh, two times a year on average. Yeah, I remember seeing a video with Tradman where a guy from Germany came over and they were doing window cleaning traditional, obviously, for Tradman's channel. Although he does do pure water as well. And he was focusing on the inside. And the guy from Germany was saying as well that it's very common in Germany for people to have in and out, whereas in the UK everything seems to be focused outside. But there is a market for it because people absolutely hate doing the windows. And when they say you're doing a good job because you're using a water fed bowl, they wonder, can you get the windows as clean on the inside? So um, I can actually I'll talk about the stuff I use on that. Uh, your cleaner window says, have you seen the spinning solar panel brushes on the X line? Yeah, I have website look great, but a bit pricey. Yeah. Everything to do with solar panels is pricey. Um, Someone made a comment in one of my YouTube videos about something else I should look at for um, conservatory roof cleaning, and I'm guessing you could probably use that on solar panels. I actually haven't looked at it. I said I would. Yeah, I've been thinking about some of that, but again, it's quite pricey. But if you've got the work lined up to recover that, then it's worth the risk, isn't it? It's all about risk versus reward at the end of the day. And because I'm rural, you get a lot of farmers, and they have them big fields sometimes, don't they, full of solar panels. But again, again, I think if you turn up with a good bit of kit, I think you're going to be really pricey because that's a lot. But it's it's like everything, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds a good idea, but you've really got to try and get into the weeds of it and check it all out. But yeah, there's some good bits of kit out there just to try and keep keep on top of it all. Uh, John Sani has those spinning brushes. Ah, oh, that was yourself, mate. Yeah, I've got to look at it. The road to clean, 24 volt, 180 RPM. If you do, you're saying get the 60 centimetre version. So that's something I definitely want to go looking up on. Um, it's like you're saying, you're saying you can use that on the conservatory roof cleans as well, rather than all that manual scrubbing. Because when you get home, <laughs> when you get old and it, it knackers you out. Yeah, hi Rob. Um, I was going to talk about that as well. Um, the pole oil is, um, Rob, told me about it i've ordered some i used it and i've been impressed last week is the first whole week i've had window cleaning with it on my pole and it has stood up to the whole week which i'll talk more in a bit but basically i've put the oil on the pole and come the end of the week it still feels like it's on there it's not worn off really fast so it's lasting a week's worth of work and the pole the oil in the bottle itself will last months definitely for the size of that so i might as well Go on to the uh, pole sprays then. This is something I used a lot. It's WD-40. It's the dry PTFE spray. I used it because I used to buy it from Wix. But for about the same price, I could buy a double-sized bottle, this 400ml bottle, off Amazon, delivered to my house. And you spray that onto the pole, let it dry for a bit, put the poles back in when you're doing your pole maintenance, obviously cleaned it and all that malarkey. And that did last me the week as well. Towards near the end of the week, you can tell it's starting to wear off. And yeah, it wasn't bad. It's cheap enough. But then the bit I did love before that was this stuff. It was made by Chicksaw Innovations. And you get this from the same place as the oil that Rob's put me on, which would be the next little picture. I love this stuff. It was wetter on the actual pole, but it lasted on there for a longer time. So it lasted me a whole week. Um, but the bottles were, cans were quite expensive and I used to buy two at a time with the post and packaging. However, I did like them and that was my favourite pole spray. It just, you can't, we well, can get it, but you can't get it from Jigsaw Innovations anymore. And I didn't know you couldn't get it anymore. And then Rob recommended this one to me. It's called Pole Care. I think, I can't, can't read it properly. And I've got a picture of it on the website. It didn't come in this size. I've got the bigger bottle. And then since having it and looking back, I've seen they do this one, a small spray bottle. So I thought, ah, I could buy the spray bottle and fill it up out of the big bottle. But I just used the big bottle, tip it onto a bit of blue roll. That's what the military used to live off. And then they used to use that to rub it all in all the poles. And then you just follow the instructions, let it dry for a little bit, and then wipe off the excess stuff. That's it. Good to go. And yeah, I've been really, really impressed with this. And 
that's what I'm going to use from now on for sure. It's as good as anything else I've used, probably a little bit better. It's slightly different. And what I've noticed this, this week with this stuff, I don't know if you've seen the comment, Rob, I tried to reply back to you. Um, was it an email? You asked a question about it anyway, how I've got on. One I've noticed it's, it's lasted me the week, no problem as well. So that's good. But my hands haven't had as much black carbon off the pole on there using this as well. So that's a massive plus. Whether it's just down to this or not, don't know. But it seems too much of a coincidence. Smells slightly different than the other sprays. It's different. And you can feel the pole more the, rather than too much lubricant on there, if that makes sense, as it's moving up and down. You feel the little ridges and bumps on there, whereas when I've used some of the other pole sprays, you can't. Uh, I might as well go on to some of these screen shares. Whee. This is something else I've used as well. It's on Window Cleaning Warehouse. I did try that when it first came out. And there was another one someone did. So I get confused with this one or the other one. But when he sprayed it on, it sort of come out with a dry white layer on it. So it wasn't as wet as the other sprays, which I kind of liked, but it wore off really quick. So it only lasted me, say, two or three days. And it felt like I had to respray the poles. So I don't use that anymore. That's that pole um, care, sorry, pole cleaner. This one's a 180 mil bottle. My other bottle's in the garage, so I couldn't tell you what size it is. It's definitely a lot bigger than that, put it that way. And you get it from Spotless Window Cleaning Surprise Supplies. I'm not sure, Rob, if that's the same place where I got the bigger bottle from. Okay, your cleaner windows, is that um, about the pole care pole cleaner, you mean? I think it's it's definitely got it here with this bottle, but I'm sure it's a different size bottle. It's bigger now. That's the only one I can see on there, whether that's changed. I believe as well, you might find this on websites where they do fishing because obviously they're using carbon fiber poles there as well. And I think they use that. Um, so there could have been the idea where they got this from as well, but it's great stuff. I definitely recommend it. And Rob was telling me the bottle I brought should last about three months. So in terms of money that you've spent, you're getting a lot back from it compared to the other stuff. So it'll save you money as well. And then the um, WD-40 dry PTFE, that's it on Amazon. And you can see it's £10.50p with Amazon Prime delivered to your door. And for about the same price, you get a bottle half the size of that in Wix. So that's why I used to get it off um, Amazon. But it's definitely now this stuff, pole care, pole cleaner. And this is spotless window cleaning supplies. I'm not sure, Rob, if that's, it's in one of the lives. Rob dropped a link to it as well. So I'll have to try and find that and whack it somewhere in the description maybe later on. In fact, that's what I'll do. Um, but it's a bigger bottom than that. It's really good stuff anyway. So I'm really impressed with it and I'm glad Rob told me that. And this here is something I'll put a link in my description. So I've just found it out. This is what we're doing this afternoon. Oh, okay, mate. Cheers. Uh, it's just your cleaner window saying yes, you've answered it. Because <laughs> I'm probably repeating myself. I'm like my me, wife and daughter. They'll kill me for that. So if you don't see me later, that's why. And um, yeah, I've put a link in the description to all the YouTubes. And I'm going to put together a shop here. And they're basically just affiliate affiliate links off Amazon at the moment until I get some anywhere and I'll start putting stuff in here um, and that's where I've put the spray so it just take it to Amazon and then the mock-off claw brush which is awesome comes in as a really handy tool but anyway just getting back to me because I'm just waffling off too much I suppose yeah so these pole sprays I've tried different ones I haven't tried them all but that Cleaner, pole, pole care, whatever it's called, pole cleaner. That's definitely a winner. I'll have to try, like I said, and find out. I was trying to look earlier for about 10, 15 minutes, and honestly, it's the only one I could come up with was the one on spotless cleaning, window cleaning supplies. I'm pretty sure that's where I got the bottle from. 
it's probably worth getting in touch with them and just asking if they've got any different sizes. You might have told they're sold out and they're just waiting for other ones to come in. Okay, you're clear. I don't know if my comments will come up. Nah, for some reason it ain't. Never mind. Go back to here. Right, your cleaner windows has just come up in my comments here, so it's probably a bit behind, like I say, it's a bit of a lag. How do you clean the poles prior to using the pole care? Right. I've made a video somewhere ages ago, but basically what I do is I when I'm cleaning my van, I'll take my window cleaning pole out and I'll strip that down section by section, take the gooseneck and all the um tubeless system out and basically just using the hose I hose down the inside of each pole what I can do is use my jet washer but obviously I change the nozzle so it's not full power and then just give it a blast through and all you try and do is get all the grit that's inside the pole out and then I give a quick spray down on the outside and then normally I just let it drip dry but what you can do is obviously go over with a cloth as well to get the worst of it off and then you just let it drip dry until the outside, the poles are dry enough. It doesn't matter too much on the inside, but basically just let it all dry off as much as I can. Make sure the outside's dry first. And then basically I just get some blue roll because I've got the larger bottle of the pole, pole care. So you just take the top off and it's just an open bottle. There's no nozzle in there or anything. And I just get the blue roll a bit wet. Wipe around the pole top to bottom. Stick it to one side and I repeat that process. Leave it just a little while and then get some fresh blue roll and just wipe off any excess stuff so it leaves a little film on there and then that's what the instructions tell you to do and says it dries quick once i've finished basically cleaning the van i then put the pole together and that's it so it's pretty simple the good thing about doing that is when you're stripping your pole down it it's where you can just look and examine at things to see if there's any cracks or anything that's perishing that you need to keep an eye on and if it'll still keep going until you're um Stop being too tight and buy a new section. Or as you probably know, when you've got little cracks here and there at the top or the bottom, you, you can always hacksaw them off. So it's just slightly shorter to keep you going until you, you cry and part with your money and get a fresh um, pole section to replace it. And then it's also a good time as well to check your clamps. I don't know if you guys know, I use the Carbon Nano, which is a high mod pole, but I took off the pole there clamps. And what I've put on there instead from window cleaning warehouse is the phantom pole clamps. They fit on there, treat. And I find it's even when the pole sections are worn where they'd normally spin, they're not spinning. So I'm getting far more use out of them. And I think they're not wearing down the pole as quick as the other, the original sections on there. Uh, and then obviously I just look at them to make sure there's anything needs replacing because there's bits that do perish on there as well, but they're cheap enough to replace. And just order them in. At the end of the day, you just don't want to have to prevent yourself from not working because something's broken. You'd like to have the spare parts. So if it does break, you can nip home, put it in. Ten minutes later, you're out again after a cup of tea and you're out working. There's your tools at the end of the day, in it? And you've got to look after them. And what I do is once a week when I wash my van on a Sunday, didn't do it this Sunday though because obviously we've had the storms, is while I turn in the van round, I just go for all my kit as well. Give everything a check, do me pole maintenance, put it back together, extends the life of your poles, get more money for your, more, you know, buck for your pound, don't you? Buck for your pound, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but that's basically how I clean my poles. And the pole lubricant is great because how it boosts your performance is obviously the first two sections of your pole, you're constantly going to be moving them up and down on houses to get to the higher levels. The more you extend your pole, obviously you're going to start using the others, up, but your first top two sections, they're the ones that are wear down the most. So with the lubricant on there, it's going to prevent the wear, isn't it? And also it's going to make the pole extend out quicker than without it. So it's going to speed up your window cleaning um, work and your pole's going to last longer. So yeah, do your weekly routines is what I would say. Re lube up your poles and they'll just feel like new every time you use them. And if you haven't done anything with your pole, you won't believe the difference until you give it a clean and lube it up. It just feel like brand new, brings a bit of life back into it and it just makes you happy again. You just want everything to be perfect the way you work, don't you? You don't want anything bugging you. You just want to be thinking ahead rather than looking back at problems. You want to think ahead of potential problems, shall we say. So, but yeah, that's what I do. 
Uh, anyway, has anyone got any other questions on here or are you happy enough for me to wrap it up? Sorry for being late starting. Sorry for not doing it last week. But if we had company around, so it would have been a bit rude. And obviously Ipswich lost to Norwich. I did watch that yesterday. I've said if Ipswich go up, it's going to be Norwich that do us. Uh, and they did. Hi, Chad. You are right. Uh, the poll loop, I'll just try and find it for you. It's... Poll care, poll cleaner. Um, Rob suggested it to me. I've used it last week on my window cleaning poll shed, and it's it's been really good. You'll see it probably in the replay. And it was a bigger bottle than the one you see in the picture. That's the only one I could find. I'm not sure if I brought it from here originally. I think I did. No worries, mate. You all right, Jake? Uh, any problems, anyone as well, just like Jake does, just get in touch, email, whatever, and I'll try and help you out because at the end of the day, I had help, so it's good to pass it on, isn't it? So just feel free to get in touch and obviously help each other out, really. We all want to help people. I mean, I've seen two or three fresh faces around here to do with window cleaning. It doesn't bother me one bit because there's there's loads of houses out there and... Who cares if someone else is starting nearby? There's only so much work they can actually fit in in a day, just like me. So there, there must be enough to go around. And it's good as well when you get referred work from another window cleaner who's told someone you're a decent window cleaner. That's that's a nice thing to get and be told and hear off people as well. So you've returned the favour as well, didn't you? And it just just feels nice when you've got, say, a seasoned window cleaner out there seeing you about and thinks you're all right. So it's all about looking after your customers as well, isn't it? And they look after you. But anyway, I'll draw it to an end. Unless anyone's got any more questions, just hope everyone has a good week. I'm trying to find a button here. <laughs> yeah, got it. It's um, hopefully, I'm just praying this month goes well. So far, we've had one blip one day. That's to do with the weather. Thankfully, this weekend, weather's fell on the weekend. The Saturday I've lost will be next Saturday anyway, so I'll get that back. But yeah, just got to do what you got to do. Anyway, be safe. Keep on the ground.